our personal companions, our private tools that allow us to enter the world of information technology. But uh, if you are online, then you are at risk. Unfortunately, that is exactly how it is. And the big thing here is data. And I'm not, I don't, I'm not talking about the data that you use to browse, but more of the information, your photos, your messages, and your emails. And here to shed some light on the situation is Mr. Shal Ukerman from AVS. He is the CEO of AVS Cybersecurity. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. So now I'm, I'm already scared because it, even the device I'm holding in my hand right now is online, so I am at risk. But what are some of those everyday risks that people come uh, to experience and how secure are our personal devices, especially the whole username password configuration that we think is so secure? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, your username and password is just like a key to a house. Uh, I mean, that's the key of getting enter, entry into your property. A uh, username and password is exactly the same. I mean, mm. don't use your uh, own name or password at one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. People tend to do it. Uh, and 80 percent of people uh, actually use very, very simple passwords, and they're actually putting themselves at risk. Sure. So, so what are some of the ways that hackers are gaining access to our personal devices these days? I think most of the time people go to sites. Uh, they download things like free antivirus. Yes. Uh, and free antivirus is probably a hacker's site. Uh, which downloads uh, malware onto your computer uh, and they then uh, do key logging. They can actually then have access to your computer without you even knowing it. So you download and allow them to actually enter your house uh, without vetting mm. whether that's really uh, the right guy that you wanted to your property. Yeah, because there's some software there on the back end that you don't know about. They can put a beautiful screen in front of you and say this will protect your computer. Meanwhile, it's doing the exact opposite. And then comes, of course, all of the apps that we download on our phones and that we use every day. Correct. Yeah, I think from an app's point of view, your Android, uh, typically your Android devices, your uh, Apple devices, not as much, but your Android devices, 99% of all viruses and malware are actually written uh, on Android code, uh, which means always make sure that you even have an antivirus uh, on your phone or on your Android device itself. Uh, it's good to, good to do. So then we'll, we'll talk about the cloud just now, but when you mention that, whose responsibility is it then to make sure that when these codes are written that they don't have access to the software that you download? Is, is it your responsibility? Well, ultimately, your safety is your responsibility. It, it certainly is. Mm. Uh, I mean, there could be so much legislation trying to protect us as citizens, but at the end of the day is what we allow uh, within our own environment and our own IT environment and yeah. what we download on, 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 as far as apps is concerned. Mm. Your safety, so, your responsibility. So yes. what about cloud computing then, the storage of all kinds of data on a cloud? How safe is that? Cloud is also safe because, I mean, you still work with a username and password. Uh, use the reputable uh, cloud platforms. Don't use any uh, Bulgarian sort of like cloud platform where things are probably downloaded or uh, coded into your computer. When you say the reputable ones, which ones are those? Microsoft's uh, OneDrive, uh, Dropbox. A Google Drive, you know, you can, those, those, are, those are fine. Yes. You, can, you can use them. All right, fantastic. So in making sure that your data is protected, you make yes. sure that you are protected of as course. well. Of course. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. So as uh, uh, Mr. Ukerman just said, I think the, the takeaway from this is that your safety online is your responsibility. So make sure that you put in all of those protocols and uh, what you need to ensure that nobody can hack into your device. But right now, let's also find out what else is coming up on your Field Good Breakfast show. Gents, I hope that you're using passwords that are better than one, two, three, straight on 456. <laughs> David, how did you know, man? How or did Clark you know? Kent or Kalal. Look, man, nowadays it's all about the fingerprint scanner, man. That's you nothing know? that's the safest. Anyways, listen, yeah, next up on your Finger Breakfast Show is that time of the week again. You've guessed it. We're traveling the world with our regular travel guessing game. Uh, hashtag Travel Tuesday. Absolutely yeah. love it as well. So, who did work is natuurlijk gee ons via a paar leidrade en dan moet ek probeer recht raai wat is ons geheimsinnige start van ochend. And then, of course, share your guesses with us on Facebook and Twitter with the hashtag Expresso Show. Are you ready? Are you ready? I am ready and I'm Kick ready off. to embrace this beautiful part of the world. In fact, we spent a lot of time there in the last couple of weeks. We are in Cuba, so that's your first clue. Um, a bit of a simple one. But this morning, we're looking for a city in Cuba that is known as the city of new trends and creativity. Now, this very unique city and what's unique to it as well is it has Cuba's only official drag show, a beauty pageant, obviously for transvestites. And it also has the best rock festival in the country called Ciudad Metal. I love that. And then, of course, the city also houses the Che Guevara Mausoleum that contains uh, the remains of the legend and 29...